Okay, I have this wireframe open, and uh, what I want to do is I want to try to create a website in Dreamweaver that looks very close to um, this design. Now, what we want to do here is we want to take some time, and so we need to do some planning, and uh, and that's where when our assignments, when we're working with this, we're trying to create a wireframe that we can group things together. So when I look at something like this, I need to look at the logical order of how things are grouped. I know I have to have a page, so we usually consider that as what we call as a wrapper. And then, then we gotta decide, okay, how do I wanna group these items? So one of the things that as I look at this, I can distinctly group this information at the top into what I is called the header. That's going to appear at the top of every page. Then the navigation bar can be its own separate section. Now when I keep saying section and, and separate areas, you know we're going to be using div tags to help us to organize this in our Dreamweaver. So I have a header, I'm going to have a navigation, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to also group all this information in here that we have, that sidebar, the testimonials, the main content, the image, I'm going to group that into the main content area. Now this happens to be divided up into three columns, so I will bring this up in just a second on what we have to look at. But we can group all this as our main content for the page. So what I'm doing is I want to create a div tag that contains all that. And lastly, we have our footer information down here at the very bottom. Now, once we have the groups together, then it's time to think about the size, the width. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up our width of our wrapper. We gotta go in and, and say, okay, here's what our page width is gonna be. And we're gonna indicate it by saying it's gonna be 960. Some people go higher, some people go lower, that's fine. You know, typically a good width is 960. Um, but as you work with things and are placed and things that are placed side by side on your page, you need to make sure that they equal up to the width that you you indicate in the wrapper. So the other issue you have to take in consideration is the space in between. Any space that takes up on the left and right hand side of the sections, you also have to take in consideration. If you don't, then one of the sections will move down below and cause an issue with your layout. So now it's time to think about widths. So let's take a look, you know, we're, let's concentrate on this middle part real quick. Now I already know my header, my navigation, my footer are going to be 960 because it's going to match, it's going from the left edge to the right edge. So we want to match to our wrapper. Our main issue is our main section. Now the main section is going to be 960, but then I need to make and divide this up into three separate sections. You can name this anything you want, but what I'm doing here is I'm going to, I'm just going to say, okay, this section here, column one, is going to be a width of 220. This is going to be a little bit larger. This is where all the main content of my text is. I'm going to make that a width of 420. And then the image is going to be in a container called with a width of 300. Now, if you add these three up, they won't equal 960. What we need to do here, you need to also include the space in between. So I'm gonna include space on the left side of the container of one, five pixels, on the right side, five pixels, and the same thing, left on the left of container three and on the right, five pixels. When I add those, that spacing up, that's 20 pixels and that equals 960. So what we need to do now is then divide this up into three separate columns of information and we have to control that with our layout. Then lastly when you have something like container this column one where you have objects on top of each other then you're going to have to add more div tags. You're going to have to go in and group those two together. So here, sidebar, I'm going to create another container called subcontainer1. I'm going to make its width 220 and it's going to match the actual main container it's in. Now what's going to be different here is that you're going to also include a height and that height 
when you add that height to the subcontainer 2's height, it's going to equal the main height of that section. So you have to keep track of your heights and your widths because if you don't, then your layout can be thrown off just a little bit. So what we're going to do here, we're going to try to utilize Dreamweaver so I can create something as in this layout. Now hopefully it's going to look something like this. Again, no content. I just add some text up here to show you. But and what I like to do, I like to use a background color to see the sections. And again, I don't use the background colors that's there because what I'll do is I'll delete it at the end. But I like to know where my sections are. And I do that either by adding a border or I can add a background color. Now, if you add borders, you got to watch out because if you're trying to fit it within a certain size, you also have to subtract that from the width because a border takes up space on the left and right hand side of your sections. So that's why I like to use background color is that it just fills it in so I can see how my page is going to lay out. Okay, so what I'm going to do here what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to do HTML none for the layout. Make sure my doc type says HTML5. I want to click on create. Now this all comes down to working with div tags. So we got to put our div tags in. And the div tags are going to help us control the layout. So let me go ahead and save this first. I'm going to do a file save as. I'm going to save in my folder. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is when I work with div tags, I'm going to use the ID attribute. And the ID attribute allows me to go in and to uniquely identify the div tag so I can apply a certain style just to that section. The ID can only be, when you use an ID, you can only use that name once. So I'm going to name it wrapper. Sometimes when you read, you'll find that it also will name it container or box. Now I'm putting the closing div tag for the wrapper right before the closing body tag. Because this is our page right now. The wrapper is our page. And then everything inside it is going to be our div tags for our other sections. So now I'm going to put in a div ID equals header. Always name your IDs. I always keep it in lowercase. Now, as you start reading this, there's sometimes you don't need to use a div tag. You can actually use um, HTML5 tags that they've added where it's called header and nav. So that's also use, useful. Right now we're just going to use div tags because it's still being used. Now here I've added a nav section. Again, what I'm just doing, I'm just typing in all my div tags for my main page. Don't forget to put in, of course, the closing div tags. Okay, so we have five main divs here. One's the wrapper. That's going to control the page. We have a header section, we have a nav section, we have a main section, a footer section. Now we're going to have to do more to it. We're going to have to go in and add to our main section those three columns. We're going to have to apply some styles. So we'll do that in just one second. But again, you got to get the main div tags in and then you can apply styles. Okay, let's bring back the PowerPoint presentation real quick or the wireframe. As you can see here, I have the header, nav, and main section footer. So we got to control, first thing we're going to do is control the width and everything like that. So in CC, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create an external style sheet. 
and I'm going to come up here in my CSS designer. Now, I, I, this is this window I'm in is considered a workspace. You can get to this workspace by going up to Window, Workspace Layout, and choosing Design. I'm going to click on the plus. I'm going to create a new CSS file. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to have it linked. Now by doing so, it automatically adds code to my page already. So you'll see that it's added right here. And this is creating what we call an external style sheet. We have also what we call an internal style sheet that only affects the page that you're on, but the external style sheet will affect every page within your site. Now, what you want to do here is you want to make sure you in, in your CSS designer, you want to make sure that you leave Style 2 selected. If this gets not selected, uh, make sure you go back and click on it. I do that all the time. Now, a lot of websites will have multiple style sheets for different sections of their page. And that's the reason why it says All Sources. Now, I'm going to come down here I'm to the Selector section. I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to type in Pound Wrapper. That's for the first one. I'm going to press my enter key twice to accept it. Then over here on the right hand side it comes up with the information I want to work with. Now what I'm going to do here is where it says width, I'm going to, I'm going to go in and choose pixels. I'm going to type in 960. Now I'm, I'm going to leave height as auto at this time. Because then it's, if my other sections have to be increased then it's going to be great on that part. And then what I want to do is to center my page within my browser. I'm going to go in and change the uh, margin spacing on the left and right hand side only. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in auto. It puts equal space on the left side. You can also click on the drop down list there and choose auto from there. So if you click on the PX, you can choose from the list or you can click on it to type it in. Now what that's going to do is it's going to put equal space on the left and right hand side and thus centering it, if there is room, centering it on your browser. Now when you add things over here, where is it added? To your external style sheet. See automatically it's added right here. See how it put a pound sign in? That's because we're working with IDs. IDs, you always use the pound sign to identify that section. You can always go back in and can change anything. So if you wanted to go to your style sheet and make a change, you can do so. Or you can go in and use your designer to do so as well. I'm going to click on the source code to take me back. I'm going to make sure style 2 is selected up here. I'm going to click on plus. I'm going to do pound header. Enter, I'm going to press my enter key twice. I'm going to set it to pixels, 960, height, pixels, I'm going to go with 150. Now, keep this in mind, if you're going to add content to this, I just set the height to 150. So if you're going to add an image into the header section, that image should be no higher than 150. So keep that in the back of your mind. You're constraining things, so you have to work within those constraints. So you can't take an image that's 10, you know, 1,000 by 1,000 and place it in your header because you only have 150 pixels height. Now, what I'm going to do here, this is where I, like, I said before I like to add a background color. I'm going to scroll down. Now, if you haven't done so, you do want to take a look at the different styles available to you. Lynda.com does a great job of explaining styles and how they're being used. Uh, you'll definitely be working with the text options um, in the next couple of weeks. So that's something you want to take a look at. Here's your border options. Now, if you're on CS6, this does look a little bit different, but it's the same properties. It is the same properties. There's just a look, the panel looks a little bit different. Now, here's background color. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to choose a background color right now. And when I work with this, it's going to automatically fill that area in with that background color so I can see what's going on. Now I'm going to come back in. I'm going to do a 
plus sign again. I'm going to type in pound nav, press the enter key twice. Again, pixels, 960, height, 75. Now again, I, I, I'm not doing anything else so except for a background color so you can see it. So as you can see here, you can have green, you have blue right below each other. Now, the, the, the height of the navigation can probably go even smaller, just to let you know. 75 is a really large amount for that purpose. So now, again, going to come here and make sure Style 2 is selected. If you start clicking at other places, you might deselect that. So now I'm going to do Pound Main. This is the main section. It should fit exactly, so we have 960. Height's going to be 400. Again, use the background color here so we can see it. And then, of course, let's do one more. Let's do a footer. Pound footer. This is case sensitive, so make sure if you name it a certain way, you and if you put a space in the name, uh, try not to put spaces in names, um, but you do have to match exactly. Okay. Again, simple, 960. This is why it's so important to get the height and width down for each of your sections. Let's do 125. And background color here, yellow. Now let me save this. Now I'm going to save all related files. What that does is saves the st style sheet as well. You have to make sure you save style sheet and the, the page. So I'm going to save both. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to view this in my Firefox. When I look at this, I can see I have a header section, I have a nav section, I have a main section, and I have a footer section. Footer might be a little bit too large in height. That can always be adjusted. That's the beauty of style sheets. So if I want to go and adjust the footer's height, I'll come over here to the footer, I'll click on it, and I'll change it to be 50 pixels. Now if you don't want to change it here, you go to your style sheet and you make your change here. So that's the beauty of style sheets. You're able to go in and modify it. Now, what we got a concern about now is our main section, where we have these three subcontainers that we need to worry about. So, in the main div section, I'm going to have to add more div tags. So notice how I'm breaking this up. I have to have it in between the opening and closing div. So I'm going to add a couple more div tags here. ID equals column, oops, make sure you put the quotation marks in, in the right place, COL1. That's for column one. Since it's really in columns, column two. Now you do have to watch out when you place things in, a lot of people what they'll do is they, they don't pay attention where they're placing it. So if you put it in the wrong place, it can cause an issue. So I'm putting the three columns inside the main section. Let me save this real quick. Now. Let's work with the, the new styles. Click on style2.cs or whatever style name you named it. Click on plus, pound col1. I want that width to be 220. I want the height to be 400. 
again I'm going to add a little background color why just so you can see it you can see the red coming in already now style 2 selected let's get the other ones selected real quick I'm going to type in pound col2 this one's a little bit larger 420 height is 400 and let's change the background color real quick Let's add another column, column CL3. Okay, its width is going to be 300. Its height is going to be 400. And let's change its background color so you can see it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save all related files. Let's take a look at this real quick. Now when I look at this, here's the green, here's the blue, but they're not side by side. They're not side by side. Well that's because we have to add floats. Whenever we have something side by side, we have to float it next to each other. So what we have to do is we have to go back in, we're going to modify the first column, and we're going to modify the second, co third column too, we're all three, and we're going to add some spacing in between. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have column one selected. See how I have it selected, highlighted? Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll up, I'm going to ch ch go to the float option, I'm going to choose float left. Uh, you can see something happening already. Now I'm also going to add a little extra spacing on the left and right hand side by using margin. And this is why based on my PowerPoint presentation where I want five pixels. So I'm going to say five, five on both sides there. Now I'm going to click on column two. I'm going to have it float left because I want to put it side by side. I don't need to put any spacing because I'm controlling that with container 1 and container 3. Okay. Now again, container 3 is still down below. It's not over here on the left yet. So what we're going to do here, column 3, float left. Oh, there's that blue. I'm going to put a little margin on the left hand side. And a little margin on the right. When I add up all those widths for each one, it's going to equal 960. Save all related. Okay. Now, this is what it was before because I didn't add floats. Floats, we're going to put things side by side. So when I click on refresh, notice how it puts it side by side. Now you can see a little yellow in between, that's from the main container, but that's the extra blank space that you have in between based on the five pixels I added on my margin. Now if you did not want any space in between, then don't use any margins and just make sure your columns match up when you add the widths, it matches up to 960. So we're setting this up and we're getting our layout in. And the last thing we have to do is worry about the first column because we have two sections inside that. So guess what? Do you know what you have to do? Think about it. So now in the first column 
I'm going to add a couple extra returns. I'm going to have to add a couple more div tags. Div ID equals sub1. Again, they can be named anything as long as you know what you're working with. Sub2. I don't like to put, I always type in that comma. That's a common mistake on my part. There you are. Now, I'm going to come over to the designer. I'm going to click on the style 2. So now, come down here and click on the plus. Pound sub 1. Its width is going to be 220. We're going to change its height. Its height's going to be 390. Uh, oops, 290. Okay. Now I'm going to add to the bottom. So I, I don't want it close to each of the sections to be too close to each other. So I'm going to add the bottom of this section. I'm going to add 10 extra pixels. So that's going to add my extra spacing. So right now I'm at a height of 300. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in. Now well, let's go ahead and add a background color so you can see it real quick. Let me save this real quick and you can we will we'll take a look at it. So what it's doing is taking up this section right here right above and then we have this extra down here at the bottom that we're going to add another sub to it. So to do so and do pound sub 2 its width should match the exact con column 1's containers width and that was 220. What should its height be? 100. And that's because we have a 400 height set for the main section. And you can see that it's going to fit nicely right in there. Now, if you want to add another color, background color to see it, but you can see that border right there. So now I've gotten that. So I have something on top of each other. So the key here, as we're working with this, is we're taking a look at my your wireframe. So okay, where do you have things grouped together? So most of the time, your main section can be grouped into two columns, three columns. Then from that standpoint you have to go in and take those columns and divide it up even more. Pay, yeah, pay close attention to your widths. So again, when you want to add space between any sections, that's where margin comes in play. If you add any spacing to the left and right, you have to incorporate that into your total width amount. So it has to match exactly to the wrapper. You can't go over 960. So if I went in and I had this width set up to be 400 for container 3, there's no room for it. Then what that's going to do is it's going to move that image down to the bottom. So that's why it's important to pay a close attention to widths and heights for that purpose. Now as you're working with this, again, all we did here, there is no content. We just set up our layout. And this layout is going to be what you're going to be using for your pages as you add content to each of these. So that's why like in a header one, you'll probably go in and you'll have some text that will include a heading. So I'll put in a heading one, which stands for a uh, main heading. Now, by default, it puts it at the top left, and it's black. So you don't want to. You want to format it. You want to format the content inside. So now you're going to be adding more styles eventually.
So what will happen is, again, once you get your layout done, then you can focus in on the content information and, and changing its styles. So we can go in and add a plus and we can say H1. That's the main element. And we're probably not going to control width or height. We might add margin or padding. See how close to the edge that that text is? So this time, what I'm going to do, is, especially when I'm working with text, I'm going to add a little extra padding from the left and, and top. So I'm going to say 10, 10. And notice how when I press my enter key, see how the space is moving that text? So you really want to practice that and see what you're working with. And then you can experiment and say, okay, let's see what the color, well, let's change some of the font stuff options. Let's change the font color. Let's make it red. Okay. Let's make it, um, let's make it all uh, uppercase. Okay, so what's doing here, anytime you apply, make apply a style, it's going to add it to the style sheet as it does right here. So, but in this assignment, we're just concentrating on getting the layout done. Once you get the layout done, then you can start applying styles that affect the content of your sections.